Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Jody, this is Sebastian. Hi. You might remember him. We're here with the new Acura MDX and the Lexus RX. They're the OG crossovers. They were crossovering before crossovers were even cool. <laughs> Uh, so the MDX got here in 2001 and the RX got here a little bit earlier in 1999. Right, but they've been, so they really set the bar and last year the MDX sold about 55,000 but the RX sold about 118,000 which is just so many it's more. A massive difference. And uh, we brought them here today to figure out why. Lexus now and it is important to note that this is a hybrid and the Acura we were going to get was supposed to be the sport hybrid but Acura did an old bait and switch <laughs> and took away our hybrid so now we have the regular MDX versus the Lexus RX 450H. Right which is the one we're in right now uh, but other than that they line up really well actually the price is mm -hmm. really similar. The MDX actually has a way bigger cargo capacity than the RX which isn't a huge surprise considering how much like physically larger it's it is. It's a big SUV. And it has a third row. Yeah which the RX does not, although you can get the long wheelbase version, which yeah. has the extra row, which then makes it a lot more expensive than the MDX. So there's something to consider. Yeah, but uh, on horsepower, on torque, on, you know, uh, most of the things that, that are sort of make up the car, it's, they're, these two are really similar, so. Yeah, and it's because they've been so like head to head ever since their existence, they've really just been competing with each other, right? right. So they're always trying to one up each other. And that means they're pretty much equal. Yeah. Okay, so I did want to talk a little bit about the interior because I think it's very nice. Like, I think it's really nice. It's a lot nicer than what the MDX has going on. Yeah, it, it, overall it's a much nicer setup. Like, they still sneak in some slightly lower grade materials. Yeah, there, there's a little bit of like hard plastic here and there. But they do a really good job of sneaking it in. Like, this is a soft touch plastic, but it does a really good job of looking nice, whereas right. the MDX... It's just a big, huge washboard, not that great. Even the little details, like the headliner yeah, on this feels so a lot soft. nicer yeah. than the MDX, which is such a small detail, but it, you know, people notice that kind of stuff. I just want to say that Lexus, this is the most awful infotainment system <laughs> in the entire industry. And I'm not even exaggerating. Really I'm not, I don't, bad. I'm not hating on Lexus. I just really want them to fix this infotainment it's system so bad. because it's so frustrating. Like this is something that people have to interact with every single day. Yeah. And just changing the radio station makes me want to murder someone. <laughs> it's so like, hard. it's so frustrating. It's so erratic. It's so hard to do. And if you're driving at all and there are other cars on the road to pay attention to, as sometimes there are, you, it's just the quickest way to have an accident. It's and it's just like, there's something with this little mousy controller. It is so annoying and it's finicky and it never does what you want it to do. Yeah. And it's maybe overly sensitive and it jumps around and like, listen to it. Bing, 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 <laughs> bing, bing. That's all it does is bing at you and you're never getting anything done. So like, wait, just let me, let me try to put in an address and let's just see how long it takes me. Let's look at the analog clock to see. <laughs> Eternities later. <laughs> I gave up. Because um, I'm not going to put in an address because it's too annoying and too difficult. It's way too frustrating. So let's just not do that anymore. Yeah, let's just not do that yeah. at all. It's a bad system. That's all you need to know. Have Lexus, good, please fix it. Have a good phone if you're going to have this car. Yeah, you need a phone mount. Yeah, basically. That also makes it worse because this Lexus does not come with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Right, so you can't avoid using the infotainment. Yeah. Which is how you're using this infotainment. And it's awful. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Let's talk about something more interesting, like driving dynamics again. So I know we mentioned it before. Um, I did want to mention that because this is the hybrid one, it switches back and forth between EV mode and your internal combustion mode. Really and it's like, randomly too. Yeah. Like it's, it makes decisions that are, seem strange. And when it does happen, it comes on like a dump truck. It's just so it's loud. It's really harsh. It's like, yeah. yeah, like uncertain. It's unbecoming of a Lexus for it to be that harsh. Like especially from the outside, it just yeah. sounds like a dump truck. <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear it. It's yeah. 
Yeah, uh, but when you're driving, it's also not that smooth. Like it kind of, kind of like jerks a little. Well, when yeah, it, it gives you a little bit of. Uh, you feel the engine come on, and it gives you a little bit of a shudder. And, yeah. Which kind of feels like something's breaking. Which I'm pretty confident something isn't, but you know. That's but not I mean, a nice this is feeling. a luxury car, right? Yeah, exactly. Like everything should be smooth, and you shouldn't know what's going on. You don't it should just work. You don't want to think that your luxury car is breaking. Talking about driving dynamics. Yes. So typically, we would be all over performance enhancements. Right, but in an SUV of this size, you kind of just want to be comfortable, right? Yeah, and so this one has the F Sport package. And to have an F Sport and a hybrid together just seems kind of weird. It doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> it's really dumb. Just everything else about this car is so comfortable. Like it, the, the materials are nice, the interior looks really comfortable, the seats have nice pillowy headrests. They're nice so and comfortable. Soft. So soft. And then, as soon as you hit a bump, you have this really nice suspension that's fighting against these really huge uh, wheels and a slightly sportier setup, yep. and it all of a sudden becomes trashy and pretty unrefined. Yeah, so if we were to get the RX, we would not get the F Sport package. We no. would prefer something a bit more comfortable, a yeah. little less crashy, a little bit more, more focused. forgiving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other cool thing is that the regular RX can run on uh, regular gas. The oh, really? hybrid needs premium though. Yeah. So the, the money that you're saving on gas, you know, you're spending on premium. So right. like, I don't know if it's a wash at that point. So I did want to mention that the RX comes standard with a whole bunch of safety equipment. So stuff like lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, all that kind of stuff you expect on a car like this these days. Right. Um, Except the adaptive cruise control. Have you tried it? No, I haven't yet, but we should so be using it right now. It works in a really weird way. It, it's a typical of a Toyota thing, but it leaves too much space between you and the car in front. And so a car will just cut you off and then the car will slam, slam on, the on the brakes to compensate. And so it just doesn't feel very natural. Well, I'm sure that it would feel natural to a Toyota or a Lexus driver. <laughs> So the base RX comes with a three and a half liter V6 that makes 295 horsepower and 268 pound feet of torque. Okay, which is about the same as what the MDX makes. Yeah, I think it's like one pound foot off and five horsepower off. Yeah, and so this is the 450H hybrid and it takes that V6, combines it with an electric motor and a CVT yeah. and you get 308 horsepower and there's no real torque output because it's for the whole system, but it's pretty good. Yeah. It accelerates pretty decently. It, 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 yeah, you never miss anything. Like you're gaps are fine and it feels like it's in a hurry it doesn't feel super duper heavy yeah i know it if it's not in eco mode right if it's in eco mode it kind of restricts how fast you can accelerate and yeah. it makes it real slow yeah yeah. You but you get great pump. fuel economy so that's 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 the takeaway right it's a trade off so if you put it into normal or even into sport or sport sharp or yeah. sport plus or whatever they call it here uh it just makes things a bit more immediate yeah from just an aesthetics point of view, too, I think this is a better look than the MDX. The, from the outside or from the inside? From both. Really? Yeah, well, this, I mean, the outside of this is pretty divisive, but I'm one of the people who thinks it actually looks okay. I think it grew on me. So when I first, when they first came out with that just big, big grill, yeah. I thought it was too much. And then the more I saw it, the more it grew on me. Right. But here's my thing about the RX is that so many people drive it that even though it has a cool style, it's still somewhat anonymous. Yeah, it's still pretty anonymous. Yeah, it, it, yeah that's a good point. So one thing I love about the RX is that there, there's a ton of room for second row passengers. It's really roomy. There's enough room for your legs, for your head. Yeah. Generally pretty comfortable. But then if you need to put the back seats down to hold more stuff in the trunk, there's a really easy switch in the trunk and yeah. one at the side of the seat. So you can do it from behind the car, beside the car. You can do it from wherever. And it's one button and you let it go and it does it by itself. So it's fully electronic. Yeah. The one in the MDX is not. So to get into the third row, it's a little bit more effort, yeah. but not too, too much. And there's no easy way to get out of it, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk that. about that later. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of problems with that third row. <laughs> but to be fair, like even in the RXL, the third row is again, pretty useless. Really, they're, they're five plus twos, not yeah. seven seaters. Like no adult's gonna sit back there and be happy about it. No, like, it's that's, an emergency That's a seat. baby seat. Yeah or like a child you don't particularly like. <laughs> the one, yeah, the one who's not gonna inherit very much. So we're in the MDX now and it's the non-hybrid. And I must say that although it's not as sporty as the RX, I still kind of prefer the way this drives. Yeah, the RX definitely feels a little bit more like Carish, it's a little more stable and it feels like yeah it's, you got more of a cockpit and this definitely feels like an suv 
Yeah, I'm, it's like I'm big and I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm loud and proud, right? I'm yeah, like it feels comfortable with its own weight, yeah. and I feel like that like heavy feeling makes it feel confident. It kind of makes it feel and super comfortable. Like it just yeah. glides over rough roads. Yeah, for sure. And I think the a part of the weight that you're feeling or that we're both feeling is that it's like it's really softly sprung, right? So it's a bit pillowy, but that means that when you're driving over bumpy roads, as you do, it's really, really comfortable. Like, yeah. It's great. Like it leans quite a bit in the corners, but I actually don't mind that so much because it's comfortable. Like it's not trying to be- Yeah, it's not trying to be something that's not. A sports not. car. Yeah. Which the RX, despite feeling a little nippier, is definitely not like, it's not a sports car. It weighs whatever, 4,500 pounds or whatever. But on the topic of the way that these things drive, yes. getting into drive is a bit of a problem because it has this weirdo, not quite a gear selector yeah. button. So Acura was making a big deal about this button gear selector when it came out because they were like, oh, the, N <laughs> the NSX has the same one. This yeah. is basically a sports car. <laughs> <laughs> Which, no. I mean, I, I understand why they did it this way was to clear up room in the in the console for like drinks and hands and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, what are they doing in that space? Like the only thing is that this button setup just isn't that intuitive. Like you have to pull a trigger to reverse, and something in my brain tells me I should be pulling the trigger to drive too, or like pushing the trigger or something. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it's not intuitive. It's not following the same. Yeah. Yeah. You're, and all the storage space in the MDX. Like yeah. it has a ton of There's enormous cubbies hella. that you can fit, huge iPads, even like a little netbook or something will fit in there. Yeah, you, you could put a purse in there, a little backpack, whatever. Right. Super handy. And like, that's what I like about the MDX is that it is clearly a family car and it owns that and it's really good at it. Right, but all of that family carness is coming from Honda. It's This is effectively the interior of a Pilot. True. And a really, really nice Pilot, and the Pilot does a really good job of what it is, but still, it kind of just feels like a Pilot. Yeah, and in that way, like, a Lexus doesn't feel at all like a Toyota. Right. So, in general, it just feels more special. It feels a little more special. Here, we're like, the RX, it hid some sort of, whatever, regular materials. This, you've got a big, huge dashboard that's all made out of plastic. Yeah, even like the window switches are a little bit chintzy in here. And yeah. it just it just doesn't feel as luxurious as it should. I mean, admittedly, I don't mind this wood. You say you're not a huge fan of it, but whatever, it kind of feels virgin on special. Sure. But the rest of everything else is kind of not. And I think that's Acura's biggest problem right now is that Hondas are just so good. Like yeah. why, why, what's so compelling about an Acura that I would get an Acura over a Honda, over, right? <laughs> right, Hondas are really great. So the flip side of that is that you also get like the good parts of the Honda, which is it's pretty nice to drive. You've got big, huge cushiony seats. It's really good at holding a family. Like it's got the, whatever the seats in the way, way back, which aren't that useful, but in an emergency, if you've got whatever, I saw you get back there earlier and it did not look comfortable. It, it is uncomfortable, that's true. You but... looked really angry too. <laughs> I always look angry. And it's cool because the people back there, they also get fast charging USB ports and yeah. all that good stuff. Lots of storage, lots of stuff to, or lots of places to put stuff. Right. And the RX's back seat is just kind of a, an afterthought, right? It's a mess, yeah, yeah, exactly. And the captain seats back here make the second row feel really good. Like the second row in this feels almost identical to the front row, minus the minus the, the controls and everything. But you still get the big cubby in the middle. You get the big, you get the armrest that you can lift, and that's kind of nice. Like especially if you're taking adults with you somewhere which I think just might be what these cars are aimed at. Like people with legs, people with legs. It feels really nice. I think that's a, which is a really nice touch. Cool. So I know the infotainment system in the RX is garbage, right? This one is a little bit better, although it also has its ergonomic issues. One positive is that it does have Android auto and Apple CarPlay support. However, yeah, it does it on the top screen, which is not a touch screen. So all any advantage that you would get from app, all like, that amazing touchscreen functionality of your cell phone gone out the window because you have to use this stupid ass the knob. rotary knob in yeah. the middle and then yeah you've got to scroll your way through an alphabet to get the address and then it's like being on a rotary phone is no good yeah and so it just takes away all the functionality and it becomes essentially useless and i don't love this two screen setup anyway i don't think it's that ergonomic right and the screens are really small they kind of look again not that special whereas the rx screen is huge and kind of shiny and bright. So in terms of style, I actually prefer the way the MDX looks over the RX, but I know you disagree. 
Yeah, th nothing wrong with the way the MDX looks. It's just it, from the side, it just kind of looks like a like an SUV. It looks pretty dull and pretty anonymous. Uh, and then from the front, it looks okay, but again, there's a lot of pilot in there, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but I just think that the RX is... It, it, the, I like the sharp creases, the big, huge, angry grill face. It's a lot of grill, is, though. Yeah, but... I. I also think this will age a lot better than the RX, though, because oh, yeah, I think sure. it's designed, there's a, there's a lot less going on, but I think it makes it a bit more mature, and yeah, a bit more conservative, but I think it'll age a lot better. In five years, that RX is going to look so old. For sure. So I really love the V6 in this MDX. I think it's got the right amount of power, the right amount of torque. Yeah. The nine-speed transmission is also fantastic. It's like the really car good. always feels like it's in the right power band. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it's making 290 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque, which is essentially the same as the RD, R, RX. Sorry, it's a little less, but you know you don't really notice a difference, and it sounds. Good, you it know? sounds way better than the RX. Yeah, the RX does not sound good. This thing is a little meaty, it's a little bassy, it's kind of good. It's a, you know, it's a nice little engine and along with the rest of the car, it feels, I don't know, it feels good. It feels capable somehow. And so because the MDX is so equally matched to the RX, it basically comes with all the same safety stuff. Um, but I do think that they're implemented a little bit better in the MDX, like they feel a lot more natural, it's not as jarring or, f you know, the RX just freaks out on you for no reason. <laughs> it's jumping on the brakes and yeah. Yeah, this is just a lot smoother, I feel like it's easier to use, it feels more intuitive. Yeah, um, I like the placement of the blind spot monitors right on the inside of the mirror, it doesn't feel like there's something behind you that's going on, it just gives you the information. Yeah, and it's like right in your peripheral vision too, so you don't even need to be looking at it to know that there's something in your blind spot. Yeah, it's uh, I, that's a really good place to put that. I mean, it's not to say that anything in this car is really bad, I mean... No, everything's actually really, really excellent. Yeah. But I think there are some quality issues, maybe some materials issues yeah. that perhaps aren't as fancy as Lexus. Maybe it's the attention to detail. Well, and that's just the thing. If you come home in an, in an Acura, is who cares? But if you come home in a Lexus, your neighbor's kind of, oh, it's a Lexus. You know, it's got more name recognition and the car looks just a little more both of these luxury crossovers are just so good, so it was really hard for us to actually pick a winner, but in the end, the RX takes it. It just feels a little more special. The materials, the badge, the looks, they all feel unique, but the MDX kind of feels like a fancy pilot. That makes this feel like it's more worth the money, and that's why it's our winner. Hundred and eighteen thousand. Just that's so many more, right? That is a huge difference. And uh, we're just here to figure out uh, why. Sorry. That is a good question. Pfizer <laughs> <laughs> test.